you know, to this spirituality that's untethered from, from reality uh, is not the fullness of Christian maturity, and neither is body without spirit, okay? structure without soul. A community, okay, so I go on to distinguish the words communion from community, even though we're all much, much more familiar with and, con and maybe comfortable using the word community, in a linguistic sense, that emphasizes the structure. Okay? It, it emphasizes that the visible. Community sometimes points to a group of people with a shared commitment to making an external impact of some sort from changing one another to changing the world. A community that lives in communion is more than just a group of people thrown together in the same place, even if that place is a geographic parish. So I say communion is to community what spirit is to the body. Community is a structure for what we're after is building the spirit that enlivens it and makes it beautiful and fruitful. And the, uh, this is uh, an insight I think that John Paul II is pointing to when he's in saying that communion can't be designed, engineered, or managed into existence. It's personal, not structural. I emphasize that point because I, my experience has been, again, maybe it's a cultural thing, but as Americans, we want to be able to reproduce it, you know, create a formula for it. Okay, pass it out in a, in a PowerPoint presentation, say, here's how you build communion. Mm -hmm. Okay, here's the here's the how to. Exactly. <laughs> so uh, it's to, to keep coming back to that thing that it's a it's a personal, not a structural reality. It's not sans structure, it's not without structure. But we have to keep kind of pulling ourselves back away from the temptation to run into, it's a method, it's a formula, okay? Vatican II described the church as a sacrament of twofold communion, intimacy with God and the unity of the human family, horizontal and vertical communion. The, uh, in fact, the vocation of the church is to be both the sign and the instrument of intimacy with God and the communion of the whole human family. So for me, that's maybe this is really, you know sounds so obvious, but when I uh, think of first communion celebration like we had a couple of weeks ago, is we get the idea on some level that when we receive communion, <coughs> that we are uh, bringing into our bodies, you know, the well, what's the phrase? Life, soul, blood, and divinity. Of, yeah, somebody knows. But anyway, the, the idea of communion with God, this intimacy with God who comes to us in this very special sacramental way uh, under the external appearances of, of bread and wine. But we sometimes lose sight of the communion, the real committed level in which it's forming within us a, a communion, a horizontal communion. And just as there's intimacy with God in that moment and, and hopefully giving life to ongoing intimacy with God through prayer, etc. But also to imagine that it's calling us into intimacy with one another. That's not, a, if you really take that literally, that might be a little bit upsetting. To take the image of family, okay, and marriage, and you can think of, you know, the intimacy between husband and wife, and say that on some level God's invitation is for us to have a intimacy with every member of the body of Christ. Now, I think the fullness of that is obviously waiting for us, hopefully, you know, in heaven, to get there. But that's the, the kingdom of God really is to be described as an intimacy you know, of all persons in Christ. Intimacy of all persons in Christ. And can you imagine the scary journey between where we are now and where we're being called to, if that's the case? We'll get into a little bit of that too, and some of the obstacles and resistance that we have to intimacy. Just the, it's the same way that a husband and wife sometimes have incredible fear of the vulnerability that's involved in intimacy with one other person. We also experience incredible resistance to and fear of intimacy, okay, and deeper and deeper connections with uh, one another in the body of Christ. So many members rooted and grounded in love are joined and grow together into the one body of Christ. In the church, the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. 
where the broader culture may be tempted to a mentality of scarcity, the church lives out a mentality of, an, of abundance. I came that you might have light and have it to the full. And this is kind of a key idea. If you go back to the Acts of the Apostles, which we, we read a lot about, hear a lot about in the liturgies of the Easter season, and really try to read those uh, and see the fascinating life of the early church, in which they, they took so seriously, they're small communities, but the idea that they put all of their goods in common, okay, and that there was no one in need among them, they, they shared all those things in common. Now, there was a communion of, of material goods, so that there was that, what we think about in terms of what would happen naturally in a family, where, you know, the food pantry, you know, the pantry is there, you know, if you're hungry, go get something to eat. Okay, the, the refrigerator is there in a family, if you're hungry, go get something to eat. Okay, everybody has access to the benefits of living in the family. Well, the early church had the experience of expanding that beyond the biological relations of clan or tribe or uh, of blood relations to the, to the spiritual family that had been created among them because of their experience, not only of Jesus, but their experience of the Spirit dwelling in them and among them. Okay? So that image of the early church uh, can confront us and also call us uh, to this level of intimacy and of abundance where uh, we have more than we need. 